Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at yet another OneNote malware doc. And uh, the reason this one is just because it was uh, responsible for downloading Agent Tesla. And so anytime, um, for me anyway, that uh, I see a, a different family or different types of malware being, uh, you know, utilizing these OneNote docs, I like to take a look just to see if there's anything interesting or, uh, you know, kind of unique about their, their, their delivery chain. Uh, the TLDR with this one is, again, it's, it's sort of a variation on the same theme of OneNote abuse. So um, not a lot of new here. In fact, this video will be quite quick. Um, there, there is some interesting things with the .NET binary that's downloaded, but I'm going to save that for another video. Uh, to get started, as you can see here, uh, there's content inside to give uh, you know, some impression that this is, is you know, legitimate. I, I'm sure that the email that this was attached to had you know, social engineering and, and kind of the, the verbiage around some sort of an invoice being overdue. Um, there's a password in here. I don't think that password, at least I didn't encounter any place where it was actually utilized. Sometimes, you know, these documents are going to lead to a, you know, a payload that's in a password protected archive or something. So you need to have those images on top of the actual script. And there's the script file. So we can go ahead and, and analyze that now. Uh, there's the hash. Of course, it is the file name, but I think it's just a little bit clearer to see it there. And I'm going to use OneDump, which is uh, a tool that I've used now in several videos. So if you haven't caught any of the other OneNote mal maldoc analysis, um, I'll make sure to get links in the video as well as you can just find those on my channel. So let's take a look at the overall structure here. Okay, so OneDump provides us with essentially three streams. We've got a couple of the PNG files, which we've already seen. So it would appear that that first stream is the one that we are interested in looking at. Uh, dash S to define the stream, dash D to dump, dash O. And I'm going to call this, um, let's see, I don't know what type of script that is. So we'll just say dot, dot text. So S1 underscore AT, since we already know the, the kind of the spoiler that this leads to an agent Tesla binary. Um, at this point, we're going to move over to Visual Studio Code. Open this up and turn on Word Wrap. You can see that, okay, it's a PowerShell script. Um, anytime that I have a script that's of any significant size, I like to get the syntax highlighting with Visual Studio Code. Now, um, really not the case here because this is fairly straightforward. It's downloading um, a, another, another script from bitbucket.org and writing it to C users public and then it's going to go ahead and, and execute that script. Okay, so I've already downloaded that, and this is what the script looks like. Uh, you can see that this, in this case, there's a pretty clearly named variable. You don't, you don't often get helpful variable names when it comes to malware authors, but the uh, the base64 encoded exe, that's definitely helpful. Although, um, you know, if you when you when you analyze this sort of malware enough at these stages, oftentimes. Um, hex encoding and then base64 encoding uh, PE files are very common. So you'll you'll recognize the patterns here to help recognize that this is a PE file. Um, even if you didn't recognize those patterns, uh, boy, this is an awfully large blob of base64 encoded text. So that's another good sign that that is the case, that that's what you're dealing with. You do have to be careful sometimes with these scripts and that they might actually be, because they're so large, they might actually be two PE files in one. And somewhere in the middle here, you'll find the, the, the ending definition for whatever variable is holding that first file and then the beginning of the second. And so if you just, you know, what I'm gonna do here in a moment is I'm gonna put my cursor at the beginning, go to the all the way to the bottom and, oops, sorry, I'm in a little trouble there selecting the end and then copying it but then and then going in base64 decoding it but if there was you know a, a break in the middle because of a, a redefinition a new variable that could of course cause you, you you know your tool the inability to base64 decode so uh, just something to keep an eye on in this case that's not the case this is just one big executable and you can see that um, really the solution is here it's uh, from base64 string not a not a big surprise um, and then writing that content to see users public eme.pif using this encoding to say that those are byte values so that's dealing with the hex encoding and then starting the process for the see users public eme.pif okay uh, we use uh, take a look at cyber chef here that's one of my go-to's then the recipe is quite simple and that we just need uh, basically the from base 64 
So that will decode and you can, uh, I'm sorry, you can save the output file to disk. In this case, uh, I'm gonna use the, uh, the, the MD5 operation. And now we can look for our sample here by via the hash on, on places like triage. And uh, of course I knew it was gonna be there because I uploaded it before the recording. And then it's already been tagged as Agent Tesla. Now you, you will find that you know, oftentimes you, well, we just unraveled a couple of stages. Um, this this stage, this executable, will also come in multiple stages, and so you might upload an executable. And you know, a place like Triage has signatures. They if they you know if the signatures match, it'll detect it before you even submit it for analysis. If not, it might take actual analysis for the unpacking to occur before that payload can be identified. And and that's actually the case that happens here. Is that that first wrapping that first .NET dropper is obfuscated enough that it, it takes the, the process of execution to get that unpacked, to get the actual agent Tesla binary in memory and, and allow it to get detected here. Um, you can take a look at some of the process activity. You'll, you'll see you know, there's some PowerShell commands that would appear to be trying to, to soften the environment, um, adding exclusions for the path that this was downloaded to. Um, it launches Acrobat Reader, downloading a PDF. Here's the request down below. I don't. I didn't see a reason for that other than maybe to make it look benign, because this is a, an actual. Um, you know, it, it's, I think it's a legit tax document from the IRS, although the content of it's probably just, just junk. Um, a scheduled task is created, and then that scheduled task is used to execute the the main payload, which is you know the agent Tesla binary is actually injected into that process. And then it's this final process uh, that ha that is the the main payload, the agent Tesla in this case, because you can see that this process is where we have the the you know things like the the access outlook profiles and, um, and there's certainly a lot more behavior than what you're seeing here. But this this gives you just sort of a quick I don't know uh, you know what was some important things that happened in that process where this first instance. You have just you know set thread context, the numerator processes, write process memory, um, so things that might be a little bit more indicative of process hollowing, and, and that's actually what's happening here is, is process hollowing is occurring. Whoops, um, in order to inject the main payload into this process and then you know executing it. Um, but we'll save the .NET stuff for another day. Uh, of course, um, the focus here was just the OneNote doc. So just to recap, you're you know you're seeing you know, very similar themes. The, the OneNote documents, the social engineering, double click, getting users to double click to execute those scripts, you know, a couple stages of scripts, VB scripts, JavaScript, you know, PowerShell, and then the main payload. And then, and then, and then you're in analysis transitions because now you're dealing with an, an, a you know, PE file, in this case, a .NET executable. And we'll take a look at that likely in a future video. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, please leave them, comments are open. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.